श्रीलंका ए ट्रॉपिकल आईलैंड नेशन जस्ट फ्यू माइल्स साउथ ईस्ट ऑफ इंडिया वेर चिल्ड्रन आर फेसिंग ए डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ कैटास्ट्रोफी दे आर नॉट अफेक्टेड बाय सैंड स्टॉम वॉलोज और अर्थक्वेक्स इट कम्स विद एन अटर शॉक दैट दे स्कूल आर अनेबल टू पे फॉर इंक और इवन द पेपर नीडेड टू प्रिंट इट its largest provinces education administration announced the cancellation of all exams for grades 9 10 and 11 on march 19 for just this reason however as entire cities come to a frightening and unprecedented halt right now paper is now the least of their worries price for necessities have doubled tripled and kept climbing these include everything from food to fuel to medicine christian nuns hindus muslims and buddhist monks who just 10 years before engaged in a civil war all joined hands in the streets in protest along with power shortages lasting up to 15 hours per day sadly the worst is probably still to come the current 9 hours of electricity and exorbitantly priced groceries may eventually be viewed as the good days as the last of the supplies run out however experts caution that sri lanka is only the tip of the iceberg despite being a unique nation many of its present issues have much too universal of a foundation last month the un issued a warning that a perfect storm was brewing in the developing country in other words sri lanka might just be the first domino to fall this year and comprehending how it became to be unable to even purchase paper may provide a glimpse of what may happen next this video is sponsored by the book love empathy and project management the book teaches about project management with the use of storytelling real life examples and visual illustrations do find the link in the description now to understand the problem well let's have one fictional nation firstly we refer to a country as having a trade deficit if it imports more items than it exports in contrast it has a trade surplus if its exports exceed its imports establishing a relationship with us profit sounds a lot like a surplus of cash and the deficit is something you will be looking to avoid but things are a bit more complex than this for instance the united states has a sizable deficit in contrast the slow growing japanese economy has a huge surplus but it's all too simple to overlook the fact that the united states and to a lesser extent japan are strange nations for instance china may win the trade conflict with the united states but what what does it do with all that cash invest your money in the us but keep in mind that these are highly particular conditions economists refer to this as a united states privileged position when china sells goods to america it wants to pay with dollars rather than dinars or shillings from iraq or somalia or rupees or sri lanka stop thinking in terms of imports again exports and for sake of simplicity think instead about the actual physical supply of dollars to see why this is a problem for a country like sri lanka india is right next door therefore when it purchases commodities from india such as milk it typically pays with us dollars because that is what india prefers the british also pay sri lanka in dollars when it sells tea to them here you could start to see two potential issues first you can see how country could simply run out of usd if it imports more than it exports because it would be in effect spending more than it is saving additionally since you need usd to purchase imports running out of money is a problem in other words the this balance of payments is crucial for nations that are in call the united states of america in addition to all of its oil it imports a sizable quantity of rice wheat sugar and medicines all of this may make trade imbalances sound like a terrible nasty extremely bad thing 
but the majority of nations have deficits possessing a negative balance of trade on its own is neither unusual nor necessarily disastrous simply borrowing is what all these nations do to make up the shortfall in sri lanka's case the government has a brief history of mismanagement for instance the government only just last year barred the import of any chemical fertilizer in an effort to create the first all organic country in the world nobody but the president was surprised when agriculture yields were instantly slashed in half yet the nation had tremendous economic promise only a few short years ago it featured additional methods for obtaining dollars tourism made for 22% of the country's gdp in 2019 In the same year, Lonely Planet selected the nation as the finest destination to travel to. There are gorgeous beaches, leopards in the wild, yoga retreats, and breathtaking natural scenery. Remittances were a further source of foreign currency. In order to transfer money to their loved ones back home, workers would travel abroad and earn foreign currency. But You undoubtedly have an idea of what transpired in 2020. Overnight, tourism practically ceased to exist. Actually, even before the epidemic, there was a fall in tourism. Terrorists struck Colombo's capital city's churches and hotels with bombs in the spring of 2019. The tragic and horrifying deaths of 269 individuals including at least 45 foreigners resulted in a 70% decrease in visitor arrivals. By 2021, its foreign reserves which were 7.9 billion dollars in 2019 had shrunk to barely 1.6 billion dollars. If that seems horrible, there is an additional factor that makes it worse than it already is. Perhaps you have heard that some nations purposefully undervalue or overvalue their currencies. Another place is Sri Lanka. Let's assume that importing a bag of rice from India costs one dollar, with one dollar currently equal to two hundred rupees in Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka started to overvalue its currency. The rupee was approximately maintained at the same value by the central bank until it suddenly became unable to do so. and the real market value to go while everyone else had agreed that 1 usc was worth 200 rupees the government continued to act as though it was 150 rupees what that actually means is as follows you can get 150 rupees back if you enter a bank and offer the bank 1 usd on the other hand if you enter a private business and provide them with the same dollar bill they will offer you 200 sri lankan rupees the message that you shouldn't deposit your foreign currency in the bank because it's a scam quickly spread migrant labor rapidly discovered that they should avoid using official routes to send money home now as a result the central bank has even less foreign money on hand which makes it more difficult for it to maintain its fictitious exchange rate and this is when things quickly become quite ugly three related issues are having an impact on sri lanka at the moment there just isn't enough rice paper or fuel to go around since the country is running out of dollars and can't afford to buy enough imports to meet demand second people's savings suddenly have a far lower value today than they did yesterday then The conflict in Ukraine started. The current commodity shock is the biggest in 50 years due to the conflict and the ensuing sanctions. Here for example, you can observe the cost and more crucially the volatility of wheat and maize which respectively Russia and Ukraine produce 28 and 15% of the world's supply. 400 million people were fed by just Ukrainian exports. some nation obtain almost all of their wheat from either one or both just these locations purchase at least 80% of the wheat from russia and U- ukraine in addition russia provides 50% of the world's fertilizer as well as more significantly the fuel required to produce fertilizer now just like trade deficits it happens frequently for emerging nations to be unable to repay their debts 
for situations like this, there is a mechanism that functions similarly to bankruptcy for countries. Typically, agencies like the World Bank and IMF intervene. The IMF last provided a dollar 1.6 billion bailout to Sri Lanka in 2016. However, this time is distinct. You see, bailouts are dependent on factors like having a functioning government and enacting economic policies, which are frequently controversial. The IMF wants assurances that the government won't find itself in the same predicament six months from now before it writes a check. It is clear that Sri Lanka cannot fulfill these requirements. Unfortunately, social turbulence and political unrest will probably simply make them less willing to help. It's simple to draw a connection between a rare global pandemic and a sudden economic collapse. It's also simple to blame Chinese loans, but neither explanation fully explains the situation. China only holds roughly 10% of Sri Lanka's debt, and even before any of the recent events, its leaders were following terrible policies. It lowered taxes in 2019 at the exact time it needed public funding the most. Although it is not the only problem, bad governance is a key component of the current cocktails of disasters. Not Sri Lanka's weak leadership, but rather how rapidly everything fell apart is very shocking. Millions of Sri Lankans went from enjoying a relatively middle-class lifestyle, including vehicles, college education and leisure activities, to now their ability to eat dinner in a matter of weeks. This is how nations become uncontrollably unstable. Pakistan's currency, which is already depreciating quickly, is being mentioned by some experts as a potential next domino to fall. But this domino is a nuclear one. This year, the war alone is anticipated to slow global GDP growth by 1%. Simply put, the biggest war in Europe since the Cold War, a global epidemic and a rise in interest rates would all have profound effects on the world. What's occurring in Sri Lanka is heartbreaking, evident and unfortunately all too real. Hoping things get better, for its citizen one way or the other. And with this, I take a leave. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel and we'll meet you in the next video. Bye-bye.